Hi, and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today, in this episode, we are going to talk about subregion and how do we use it while working with topography. Let's begin. All right, so we are going to start this video from this point onwards. I already have a topography. I've also created a building plan. Now, in the previous video, I've shown you the methods of creating these two. So if you haven't watched the previous videos related to topography, I really recommend that you do. I've given you all the links in the description box. Today, we are going to go and learn about the subregion tool under the Massing and Site tab. The subregion tool is quite interesting because it creates a region of a topography over the original surface that adapts to that slopes and contours of the original surface. Let's try that out. I'm going to go under the site plan and let's start with the subregion tool and let me create a circle. I'm going to assign this subregion a material of grass because I want to give the subregion a different material than my original surface so that we can see that clearly. Let me go ahead and create a circle over these contours that are quite at a high slope. And I'm going to create a circle somewhere around here. And let's finish it. Now this circle looks like a circle in a plan view, but let's go ahead and have a look at in 3D view. In the plan, it's a circle, but it has adapted itself to the slopes of the original surface. And it consists of the material grass. So what is the use of the subregion? In what circumstances do we use a subregion tool? Let me go ahead and delete this. I would like to share with you an example project that I had done for a master planning project. Let's go ahead and go into this 3D view. This, this is quite a huge site plan. And this is basically a pathway that leads all the way up to the site that we were working on. Now this pathway is not really the pathway that you can actually walk on. But at a master planning level, you really don't want to go in that much detail of constructing the slopes and the alignment and the profiles of the road that you're going to construct. At the master planning or the conceptual level, it's more like where is that pathway is going to be on. So this particular pathway that you see here is made of subregion. So it is a region that I've created in the site plan and has adapted itself onto the surface of the original topography. This surface, this subregion really goes into the site. Let me go ahead and hide the category of the planting so that we can see everything clearly. So here it leads to a temple. And here you can see that there are two different colors that is marked up here. Now this particular orange color is also a subregion which has a material of flower bed. Now this is really a simple uh, material that I've created with a different color so that I can see uh, that this part of the surface is going to be constructed as flower bed. Now there's not much detail in here. Whenever you go into the detail design phase, you can think about this flower bed in a, uh, from the landscape architect point of view. Now here, this particular green patch of the subregion that you see is made up of grass and it's located as a, and is shown as a landscape area. As you can see here, this particular area is a landscape area and this little part is the flower bed area. All the others is the subregions that's been created to mark the pathways. These buildings you see here are constructed in a separate Revit project and has been linked into this master planning site plan. So in totality, you see that there are multiple buildings, there are multiple different pathways that are connecting these buildings to the road below. Now, this is one example of how you can use subregions. This is subregions are mostly used for these two different ideas. One is to create a pathway or um, kind of um, a, a way to your buildings in the topography or you can create this as a tool to demarket the areas for particular phases or particular use case like in this case it was a landscape area. For you it could be a phase one construction area or, or you could say the existing buildings area or something like that that you want to mark a large piece of topography with a different um, material or a different color in your site plan. So let's try that out in our this project here. I want to create a pathway that leads up to my building plan. How do I do that? So let's go under the site plan 
and I'll go into the sub region and go ahead and create a, a pathway that leads up to our building band. Now the sub region tool has to be always a closed loop. So let's go ahead and start. Maybe I switch on the radius so that we have a little bit curved pathway. So you see here the corners are, has a one meter radius fillet and I'm going to use offset tool. Maybe in my pathway is about a meter to offset this. Maybe I'm going to fillet this with one meter radius. And there we are. We have to close this one here. And I'm going to trim it up. Make sure that there are no intersections, no overlaps, and no open loops. There we are. So we have a closed pathway that is leading from one point to the other. And it's made of a different material, maybe not grass, but let's say we want to call it asphalt. I'm just using this gray tone for now. I'm going to finish that up. So let's go ahead. And you can see here that we've created a subregion, a pathway that leads to our building pad. Let's try another example with a more slopes uh, area. Let's say this particular area is facing towards south. This is wonderful slope for putting our solar panels probably. So let's demarket this area as um, the area for solar panels. Now we are at the conceptual level and if there's not much more detail available here, but we Initially, from the conceptual design, we want to establish the zones for our design. So this particular zone is going to be used for the design of putting solar panels for electricity generation. So I'm going to go into the site plan and I'm going to use this slope, this part of the slope as my area. So I'm going to go into the sub region and maybe I'm going to use a different material this time. Maybe I'm going to use a little bit of grass, so it's going to be a landscape zone where it's also going to be part of the solar panels. So I'm going to go here and I see that I want to start from this part here. And maybe it extends all the way to the bottom. I'm going to follow the contours as much as possible and i'm going to close this up again a subregion should always be closed loop there's no intersections and no overlaps and i'm going to finish that up let's go ahead and see what happened here so this part of the area is marked as areas for landscape or for solar panels and i'm going to go under my site plan and i'm going to annotate this area as solar panels in landscaping zone so there we go if you would like to make any changes to your boundary line after you have created your subregion you can always select your subregion go to the edit boundary and go to your site plan because that's where it's most clear and you can always revise your boundary a little bit more further so you can say okay this is too much slopes on this side i want to bring this a little bit closer and i want to close this in this way trim it up a little bit here and make sure it has no overlaps no intersections and let's say it's quit scratching because there is an intersection somewhere around here let me check this out and i'm going to trim this part with this one and there we go so you can always come back and revise your boundaries of your subregion wherever you want you can also do that with the material so you can always come here and say I don't want the material to be grass anymore instead I want this to be asphalt and I will go here and make this up here now let me go back to the same project that I showed you earlier now this particular project is has the sub region multiple Revit files that are linked to each other and also it has many different site components like trees like this customized uh, lamp or the custom family of the site component that is showing the signboard now also many other different types of plantings here small ones big ones now also here if you see people which are located at different uh, positions 
So all of these different components can be placed on your topography and made your site plan come alive by using the site component tool. So that is going to be the topic for our next episode. What are site components? How do we use them in a topography and bring our site design come alive? So please make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.